Hi everyone, it's Natalie and tonight I'm going to be coloring in this picture of a peacock with Prismacolor colored pencils. You, they look like this, you can get them in smaller and larger packages at craft stores such as Hobby Lobby and Michaels and you can find them on Amazon as well. However, I warn you if you go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels, they can be a little expensive but the way around that is to go on their website and look for the 40% off coupon, print it, take it to the store with you and purchase it. Uh, you'll save a lot of money doing that and the coupon is for any item in the store, not just Prismacolors. So I highly recommend you do that to save money. Um, another announcement, if you guys didn't see my video last night, I told you that I'm now making coloring pages that I'm posting online through Kids Activities blog. If you want the, to print the coloring pages for yourself, look at the link in the video's description. It'll take you to the page to print bee coloring pages that I made, like, you know, the flying bees. Uh, you can print those. There's also a tiger one up on the website that you can easily search for. However, I only put the link for the bees. And another piece of news, uh, tomorrow make sure you don't miss that video because to celebrate about like Pokemon Go being rele released for a week, I'll be drawing Pokemon to your guys' request. So you guys can just like shout out names of Pokemon and I'll draw them for you live. So don't miss that. It'll be the same time tomorrow night, 9.30 p.m. Central. So let's begin. I'm going to start with the eyes of the peacock, which I start with a black Prismacolor, as usual, just to get the darkest parts in. Hold on, let me sharpen this. And apart from just using black, I'm also going to use brown to give the eyes some more color. Uh, this is better than just using black, and besides you can make a transition from the brown to the black just to help give the eyes some more depth. And if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them. I'll try to answer as many as I can, just keep in mind I don't see all the comments at once and only about five are on the screen, so they fly off rather quickly whenever new people comment. So if I don't get to your question, you can try and ask again, but if you really need to ask me and I don't see it at all, then you can send me a direct message on Instagram if you want. Now, I don't know how noticeable this will be on the screen, but I'm going to add a, t a slight touch of yellow-orange with the brown on the eye, just to shade it a little bit. And now, this is my favorite part whenever I shade the eyes, and that is to use white acrylic paint to create the reflections. Uh, this part really gives the eyes the reflections and definitions that you want to make it look realistic really makes it pop and it enhances the picture overall. So to do this I just use a little bit of white paint. It doesn't matter what kind of paint you use. I mean, I normally stick with acrylic because it dries fast. I wouldn't recommend using oil because I think that's too much for what you need to do here. Uh, so just cheap acrylic paint really does the job here. You just put a little bit of it with a thin brush. You make little shapes like squares and circles. Okay, I'm done with that part for now. Uh, Tracy, yes, I drew this image before I started coloring.
Right now I'm coloring in the eyelid that surrounds the eye on the peacock. So to do that I'm just using black and gray and blending them together. Right now I'm going to color in these white spots on the peacock's face. It would be this stripe right here and this stripe right here. I don't know if it's really a stripe, but it's more just a strange shape, but it looks pretty cool. Um, right now I'm going to erase, before I start coloring, I'm going to erase the pencil marks below it so the graphite doesn't blend in with the white and create like a grayish smudgy color. It's just it just makes the picture a lot cleaner. Uh, Jennifer, I'm not entirely sure about the price on a set like this of Prismacolors. Uh, my set is a 48 count, however I got it as a Christmas present as a second hand set, but it's still just as good. The person I got it from didn't really use much of the pencils, so it seemed like good as new to me. But um, I've seen different ads on different websites. I think that the set varies like around the $35 range. I could be wrong, but you can get tons of different sets for Prismacolors. Um, I don't know if I've seen the 48 set at Hobby Lobby, which is where I shop the most, but they have smaller sets of 12. I think they also have 24, and I know they make a 72 as well, so um, a good set of pencils just depends on like how many pencils you consider to be a good set. Um, I think that the 48 count set is pretty good because like, it gives you a wide range of colors, color different things, and it works case scenario if there's a color that you don't have. You can mix it by just blending pencils together, but I know the 72 set will be more precise with the colors that they give, so you won't have to blend as much to get new colors. So I would recommend going on Amazon, checking out some prices. Also look at Hobby Lobby and Michael's websites. I know that you can also find these pencils at Walmart. Uh, I saw them there a couple of times, and I know a lot of you in the comments said that you've purchased them at Walmart. So also check out Walmart, because Walmart can be really inexpensive sometimes. Uh, Heather, these are not watercolor pencils. These are just regular colored pencils, but they're made by Prismacolor, and they're really nice because they blend well together. how perfect this is. They have a color that's called peacock blue. Just absolutely perfect for coloring in a peacock. Uh, to color in the peacock's feathers, I'm not just going to be using the peacock blue color. I will also be using some greens and just a hint of yellow because really the feather colors on a peacock are pretty varied. So I just have some of my other colors right here. Uh, Lori, yes, these are Prisma color pencils.
Tracy, I use Tone Gray Paper by Strathmore. Now someone asks, do you have a website? I do not, but I do have an Instagram if you want to see pictures of my artwork. The link to that is in the video's description if you guys want to check that out. The pencil keeps breaking. Piece of advice whenever you guys are looking for sharpeners for Prismacolors, don't buy the plastic ones that you use for just standard wooden pencils that you would use with school or things like that. Um, I would get yourself a nice metal pencil sharpener that's specifically made for art supplies. Those are usually uh, more heavy, they're, they're bit, uh, better. Sorry, I'm trying to unclog a pencil sharpener, but um, these like metal ones like this, they last longer and usually the blades are on tighter so it doesn't always come out of place. Uh, they're just better altogether, but uh, be careful of sharpeners that come in sets with other pencils and colors because usually those are just like an added bonus, they're not always the best. 
So I'd like get yourself one on its own. Uh, good ones shouldn't be more than like three dollars, really. But, uh, please excuse my dog. She's I don't know if she's doing. But, uh, anyways, uh, there is a better way to sharpen your pencil, so and that is to use a blade. This this method minimizes waste. However, it can be dangerous, so if you're a younger viewer, please get assistance while doing that, or don't do it all together because I don't want you to hurt yourself. But it's definitely the most efficient way of sharpening these pencils, as you get to save more of the precious color. You don't want to waste it because these can be sometimes really expensive. Um, what else? But yeah, just don't get the plastic sharpeners. They're really not that good. Um, and you'll just end up wasting a lot of your pencil. And this pencil is broken on the inside. Whenever I color, I can feel the lead just moving around. And see, it comes out like that. Uh, this one may have been dropped in its previous ownership. I don't know. I know that dropping them can break the color inside, and whenever you try to sharpen it, it will come out in little segments. So that's no fun. And your pencil will keep getting smaller every time you try to sharpen it. <laughs> Someone asks, what kind of dog do you have? I really don't know what this dog is. She's like a mix between a lab, maybe a golden retriever, and like just maybe, maybe, maybe part corgi. I don't know, I see it in her face. If you want to see a picture of her, there's probably some old ones on my Instagram. But we, we got, she's a rescue dog, so we don't really know much about her. But all I know is that she's adorable. I just call her Sally because that's her name. I don't really have a dog breed that comes to mind whenever I think of her. I just know her as Sally. <laughs> Well, for those of you who came in late and you didn't see the beginning of the video, uh, a few things I want to tell you. I'm starting to make coloring pages for you guys to download and print for free. So you can get those through the Kids Activities blog. Uh, the link to it is in the video's description and it links you to some coloring pages that I made. Uh, keep uh, Stay tuned on this website because I'll be making a lot more. They just won't all come out at once. They'll be spread out over time, but there will be lots, so stay tuned on that. I hope you guys enjoy coloring them. A lot of them are based off of old live drawings that I did, so if you want, you can go back and rewatch some of the videos. Uh, currently, there's a live one on the website of bees and one of a tiger. So if you guys remember me live streaming those, I made coloring pages from the original drawing that I did. It, they were rather simple to make, but it took a lot of time lining and inking everything because I wanted to make them in an actual coloring sheet format. But like I said, you can download and print those for free, so check out that link. And for tomorrow night's video, uh, to I guess celebrate the release of Pokemon Go for, it's been like about a week now or something, but I thought it'd be fun for me to draw a bunch of Pokemon for you guys. I'll just take requests from the audience, so you guys will decide every Pokemon that I draw. Um, keep in mind I won't be able to draw everyone's request, so I'll just draw whatever comes up on the screen whenever it's time to draw a new one. Uh, so don't like get upset, or if, if anything, if I don't choose yours, it's nothing personal, it's just I probably didn't read the comment, or I just don't have enough time. 
So stay tuned for that. It will be really fun. And if you have kids that love Pokemon, they played Pokemon Go and stuff, get them to watch it. They'll enjoy it a lot. Uh, Renee asks, do you think it's a good idea to trace the pencil marks with black marker before coloring? Uh, I'd say that depends on the style that you're aiming for. If you're aiming for a realistic drawing, I wouldn't trace it with black marker, but if you're looking for like a more cartoonish or one that expresses itself as like definitely an illustration, black marker can be really good. It just depends on what you want to do with it. Um, it's not really a yes or no question. I mean, I say yes if you're into it and you want it to look like that. And go for it. I mean, in this drawing, I didn't want to do black outlines, so I didn't. But really, it's up to you and your own personal style. Uh, Ashley, the link to my Instagram is in the video's description. color the beak, the color of this peacock's beak, I don't have it, is a Prismacolor pencil, so to achieve it I'm going to be blending some colors together. Uh, right now I'm putting down a light shade of purple, or it's more of a lavender, oh it's lilac, that's what the pencil says if you're wondering, but I'm going to apply a light coat of this first and then I'll blend it in with gray.
So someone asks, are you playing Pokemon Go? I am. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. The whole concept of it was brilliant, really. It's a great way to integrate the smartphone's GPS capabilities with something interactive. Uh, I know it's been getting a lot of people up and outside, which is pretty cool. I mean, I like going outside in any ways and like walking around cities and malls and stuff like that, but really the Pokemon thing was just an added bonus. And like I, I've played Pokemon ever since I was little, so like, it was something that's really cool. Uh, I can't wait till they add more to it. I know that there's only the original 151, and I don't even know if you can catch like the last five right now. But it'll be interesting to see where the game goes and what else they add to it. Like right now, it's a great start and like, it's a really neat concept. I know it's been a huge success, and that's why I'll be drawing Pokemon tomorrow night for you guys, just to kind of like celebrate that, I guess. Um, I'll be using my 3DS to look at references of the Pokemon, so like, don't worry about me finding reference pictures. I have all of them. I just have to open my Pokédex on my game, and I have every Pokemon, so I can easily find that. Oh, and on top of the gray and the lilac, I used a little bit of dark brown to shade in the beat. It's just something other than black. Uh, that's one thing to keep in mind whenever you guys are shading. Uh, whenever you're shading something that's like a warm color, or sometimes you can do it with cooler colors as well, but uh, you can use brown to shade instead of just black because black can be a little dark and a little bit too much. But brown is a nice transition from a different color into black. Let me extend this little white stripe. Monica, I chose Team Mystic. I actually t chose Team Mystic by accident because I was moving stuff on my desk as I was choosing it since there's like a gym rather close to my house so I was able to do it but um, accidentally double click that. Um, I know a lot of people they asked me to join Team Red because like that's what they were doing so I was thinking okay maybe and I was just looking at it and while I had the Team Mystic one open I accidentally double tapped. I think I'm pretty okay with that though because I, I like the character for it and I like like all the values with Team Mystic. I thought about choosing uh, the yellow team, but just because Zapdos is like the best bird in my opinion, like strategically it is, but in Pokemon Go, like everything about competitive Pokemon battling kind of goes out the door at that point, so uh, it didn't really matter at that point, so like, I'm okay with Team Mystic, even though it was chosen on accident. So to all of you guys in the comments uh, that are playing Pokemon Go, what's the coolest Pokemon that you've captured so far? i say for me, uh, the coolest one that, I, well I didn't really capture, I hatched it, oh, I hatched an Aerodactyl, I was pretty excited about that. Uh, it was in one of the 10 kilometer eggs, and like it, I was really thrilled to see that. Uh, I'm trying to think of the best one that I caught, I don't really have one because I'm only at level 10 right now, I just leveled up to 10 today, so like I don't, I haven't seen like really really cool ones in the wild. I think my strongest one is a Flareon right now. I'd have to double check that. Uh, Michelle, part of what makes the eye look so real is I, I used white acrylic paint to add little touches of reflections onto the eye. Um, it's really useful whenever you want to enhance a picture, just make it look more real. It gives the eye kind of like that watery and reflecting look. Like, I d definitely recommend that you do it whenever you're drawing pictures of eyes because it just adds a whole nother dimension to the picture.
Uh, to those in the comments that came in late and didn't hear any other part of the video, I'm using Prismacolor colored pencils. You can get them at places like Hubby Lobby, Michaels, and on Amazon. Uh, same with the paper, you can get these at the same places. This is Tone Gray Paper by Strathmore. I think all my paper products that I use for art are by Strathmore, except for my sketchbooks. Um, I don't know if Strathmore makes any hardbound sketchbooks. I haven't seen them, but that's okay. Like everything else I have is all Strathmore. much blue to color. <laughs> If you're trying to color in a large area, if you hold down your pencil at an angle to where the like this part touches the paper, where it's almost like as flat as it can be, this will let you color in a larger area at once. It's really useful whenever you're coloring large areas, but keep in mind it's not as thick and as solid as it would be if you're just coloring it in at like the traditional angle that you use. Um, you might have to put extra pressure to color it in darker, but it's really helpful whenever you want to color in large areas. And I would recommend putting your finger over the tip just so it doesn't break, because whenever you do that, there's a good chance that the tip might break. So by putting your finger on it and coloring like this, you won't break it. Uh, Cheryl, that's a great question. Uh, whenever I mess up on something like there's a huge mess up to where like say your color let's say I took this blue and went like off to the side really dark, really thick, and it's like that's a disaster. Um, well, first of all, I would hope that it's in a place where I can help incorporate it into another part of the picture. For example, if the blue like went all the way out here, I would try it and color over it or incorporate it into part of the back feathers here. However, like all the time I'm not that lucky for things like that to happen. Um, it's really hard to erase these pencils. I can try things like try to lighten them with erasers. I try really hard. Um, gummy erasers can be used to blend pencil together, but uh, it can like lightly remove the color, but not all the way. So if you're in that scenario, it's kind of like Really your best bet is to try and incorporate it to a different part of the picture and make it this, make it the least noticeable. But like sometimes you just gotta deal with it. It is what it is. I can't always clean up the mistakes. Uh, thankfully I don't have memories of making mistakes that big on my pictures, although I'm sure I've done it in the past. It's just something that I like, guess bound to happen really. Braden, uh, what helps make the eyes look so real in my drawings is I use white acrylic paint to add reflections to the eyes. You can see the little touches of acrylic paint right there. Um, this is something that is really hard to accomplish with just using pencils because it's really hard to put the white pencil on top of a dark color. So I get around that by using acrylic paint. The acrylic paint makes the eyes look so much more realistic because it gives it that watery reflection effect and it just makes the whole thing pop. 
So if you're drawing pictures of eyes, I would recommend adding like little shapes of white with white paint and that will help make your eyes look so much more realistic. I forgot, I have some more blue colors that help make a good transition between the black and the peacock blue. This one is violet blue, although it doesn't really look too violet to me. It could also just be that I'm using it on top of peacock blue, which like, intensifies the blue so much more. Now right now I'm using white. It's really hard to see on the camera, I think, but by doing this I can create some lighter feathers. Um, from what I see on my screen, uh, the blue in the picture it looks a lot darker and like just more intense than it does in real life. Uh, what I'm looking at, the blue is very vibrant. And it's not as dark or as gloomy as it does, as it looks in the video. So keep that in mind. The colors that I'm using, it's not like the ac it's not an accurate depiction of it because. The colors can actually be really different, it's just video sometimes distorts the actual colors that you can see. Atop the peacock's head are these little, like, I don't really know what it is, like these really long hairs with more hair on top of them, or feathers. They're just like these really long stemmed feathers with hair on top. Um, these, I don't know what the proper term for them are, if you guys know, please tell me because I think that'd be pretty cool to know, but um, they're like these, they look like little mini fans, and they all come up from these really long stems from the top of his head, so that's what I'm illustrating right now. Uh, again, for anyone that missed it in earlier points of the video, these are Prismacolor colored pencils. They come in a container that looks like this. This is the Prisma logo. You'll find it everywhere. Uh, it's across stores such as Hobby Lobby and Michaels. And you can get them on Amazon. And from listening to you guys in the comments, you can get them on, it, well, not on, but at Walmart. Uh, so I recommend that you go to those places. If you go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels, always check the website of those stores before going because they always have a 40% off any item in the store coupon and you can use that on Prismacolors. You'll save a lot of money in the process, so don't forget to do that. Now I'm connecting these fan-like feathers to its head with the, the brown that Pretty decent color to draw the feathers. I should have erased all the pencil between here first. But that's one thing I always forget to do. I always say erase your pencil before drawing, but I always forget. I know it can be kind of difficult to remember whenever you're caught up in the drawing process. But like sometimes it's for the better that you remember because you gotta remember to do it otherwise the graphite might smear with your colors 
and create an effect that you weren't expecting and sometimes it can almost like ruin a certain color or point in the picture depending on how critical it was. Uh, Audrey, to your six-year-old brother, my favorite Pokemon is Piplup because Piplup was the very first Pokemon that I chose back whenever I first played Pokemon Diamond in 2007. Um, but yeah, Piplup. I, I've loved it ever since. <laughs> Okay, now for the back feathers. I think this is probably going to be one of the best parts of this video because it's so colorful, coloring in a pe uh, peacock's feathers. So I'm going to start by coloring in the tips black because that's what they look like. Hold on, excuse me as I move my pencil stash. <laughs> Uh, Nancy, no, the paper is not white. This is Tone Gray Paper by Strathmore. I really like it because it's different from just plain white paper because this paper gives you a natural gray background which complements every, just about everything really well. And it really makes colors like white pop on the page because like applying you can actually apply white and see it contrast with the gray, something you can't do on regular paper. Because if you want a nice subtle background on white paper, you have to color it in yourself, but this already gives you a background that looks really nice. So I would recommend it if you haven't tried it yet, since it's so cool. Uh, you can get it at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and on Amazon. Uh, I don't think that the 40% off coupon that I was talking about earlier applies to this paper because it's usually always on sale, 40% off already. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's always really cheap. Like I haven't purchased a pad of paper like this for more than ten dollars so like compared to a lot of other art supplies that you can find this is actually really inexpensive because you get uh oh if you guys want here's what the front cover looks like you can get it at the store i know it's marked 11.99 but hobby lobby is 40 percent off uh, you get 50 pages so there's plenty to color uh, but yeah it looks like this if you guys are looking for it you find it just with all the other papers and sketch pads I highly recommend that you try it. I know that they also make toned tan. I haven't tried that, but if you guys have, tell me what do you like better. Do you like do you prefer the gray or tan paper?
Okay, the peacock feathers are really cool. They have this black spot in the middle, which is surrounded by blue, then brown, then green, I mean, then yellow, then green. So there's only going to be a few of these little spots of color on the page, which is like the center of the feather, I guess. But one of them will be right here. And this is where I bring in a lot of the colors. Uh, here's, I'm using aquamarine to color in the blue. Because it's not like, a perfect blue, it's more on the greenish side. Uh, personally, aquamarine and turquoise, those are about my favorite color. I say my favorite color is probably closer to the light aqua Prismacolor pencil, I guess if any of you were wondering. Um, I just, I've always liked this color, there's something about it that just really resonates with me. Um, I try to like buy clothes and shoes and stuff with this color. I don't buy backpack for schools this color. Um, To texture these feathers, I'm going to use little lines that come out from the middle to help texture the feather. Just like that. And surrounding the brown will be yellow. You know, now that I look at it like this specific shade of blue doesn't go very well with this brown, unfortunately. I think I used the wrong brown, and I don't know if this yellow will do, so let me experiment with different colors. Uh, one thing I recommend that you guys do before you use colors is to test them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to do that right now. I should have before the video, though, just to make sure I had all the right colors, but um, what you can do is if it's just a small little area that's solid color and you don't really have to blend it, it's okay to just like, paint over it with something if it's not too noticeable. Now, I do that sometimes whenever something's not the right color. It's really helpful and like painting, it takes up a lot of space so you, you can color large areas at once. Uh, I'm trying to find the right green, which will be this. So the peacock feathers, the way that each little strand is spread out, it's really neat. It like curves around the middle and it's really cool. Oops. And that's why I'm illustrating with the green. It's almost like the shape of an onion, kind of, but longer. Um, and some of the strands, they just kind of, they lose their tightness up here and they kind of just flow. It looks really neat.
think you guys can see what I'm doing down here. Unfortunately, like, my, the way I'm set up, I can't really push the page up any further. But I'll be quick at this part. Um, if any of you were curious, uh, the setup that I use to record these videos is with something called a shot box, which is this plastic box that pops up and there's holes on the top. And I rest my phone on the top and the camera sticks out of one of the holes and it records everything below it. It's super cool. Um, it's good for photography and recording and things like that. Uh, but unfortunately sometimes like it's hard to color because like the sound right here is the edge of the pencil hitting the wall. Um, other than that, like I really enjoy this setup. It has great lighting and I'm able to see all the colors and everything and it produces a good quality video. Um, however, sometimes like regardless of the good lighting, the color is distorted on camera sometimes. I can, uh, I'm really sorry about that. I know that one video I made, I painted hair like with this bronze, brown, metallic color, but on the video it looked gold and blonde. Uh, that was pretty interesting. It looked good either way in my opinion. However, for this peacock, one thing that's kind of annoying me is that it just looks so dark and intense on the screen, whereas on the paper I'm looking at, it looks a lot different. The blue is actually a lot lighter. Um, other than that, like I really enjoy the lighting here. It's pretty nice. Uh, and the lighting's also adjustable, so I can like dim it or turn it off. <laughs> Oops, I didn't mean to do that. But uh, if I put the light too low, you see these lines across the screen, which are kind of annoying. Now, I'm not sure exactly why this is happening. I, again, it probably has to do with just the lighting and the types of lights that are being used. Uh, Kaylee, I've been drawing and coloring since middle school. Uh, Grace, I live in Texas right now. Uh, Kaylee, I definitely had to work really hard to get to the level of drawing skill I'm at today. Um, it's not just like I woke up one morning and I was like, oh, I'm gonna draw, and then suddenly like everything happened. Um, like, I, okay, I know this is a question I get a lot, like, did it come naturally to you? Uh, I say like, the, I guess the determination for it and like just keeping with it, that felt natural to me. But like the skill itself isn't natural, that's earned through work and practice, which is driven by your determination for something like that. So, I mean, it's not like I can just do this automatically. It took years of practice and learning about art to do what I do today. Uh, bon, I have an Instagram page that can be followed by any account. It's a public account. Um, you can find the link to that is in this video's description. Uh, it's just an Instagram page. Uh, for anyone else that wants to follow or ask any questions, please follow me on Instagram.
Oh, it's 10.29, almost 10.30, so I have to go. I'm out of time tonight. Um, I'll, I'll finish this some other time, but uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all the lovely comments and questions. Unfortunately, I'm sure I wasn't able to answer every question because like, if I didn't see it or it flew off the screen too quickly, I'm unable to look at it. So uh, if you guys have a question that you're dying to ask, please send me a direct message on Instagram. Uh, if you're Also, if you're interested in purchasing artwork or having artwork done for you, I do make commissions, so please message me about that. And if you don't have Instagram, you can always send a private message to the Quirky Mama Facebook page and they will forward it to me. Just make sure you leave your email. Um, other news, uh, always look online on Kids Activities blog and you can find coloring pages that I made. Those are free to download and print, so I encourage you to do so. Uh, the link to that is in the video's description, along with my Instagram. And tomorrow night, I'll be drawing Pokemon as requested by the audience. You guys will just tell me a bunch of Pokemon to draw, and I'll try to draw as many as I can. <coughs> I think it'll be a lot of fun, especially since Pokemon Go just came out. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, 9.30 p.m. Central. Bye!